I found my broom for nothing. Went all the way through. It's not like I have a huge house, by the way. But I found my broom. I was so excited to show it for nothing. For absolutely nothing. Because Mariners lose for nothing. They fall to 31 and 27 on the season. But they do take three of four against the Houston Astros. Go over the scoring plays. There's not many of them. It's funny that they're happening in the fourth, fifth, and sixth. Because we've talked a lot about how those innings have been uneventful for the Mariners and for their opponents. But fourth, fifth, and sixth, not unfortunately, um, not uneventful for the Seattle Mariners. In the fourth inning, Alex Bregman homers to left to score Kyle Tucker. I want to talk about that play. Two nothing. Uh, Victor Tarantini, Tarantini, uh, Quentin Tarantino homers to right center to make it three to nothing. And Quentin. <laughs> Carantini also grounds into a fielder's choice to score Alex Bregman in the sixth for nothing. All of those runs against Logan Gilbert. The Mariners don't do a diddly darn thing on offense. Uh, positives. I thought Logan Gilbert pitched okay. Uh, the first time through the lineup, he looked great. Uh, did not look great the second time through. Did not fool the Houston hitters. Through that second and third time, and I know there's jokes that you can make. I just don't think the stuff was very good. The command wasn't great. Only it's just a one walk, but we talk about command versus control. It gives up the eight hits. A mediocre start. A start that the offense could have overcome, for sure. I thought Scott Service put that pretty well in the postgame thing. I disagreed with the whole making excuses for why you don't win this game. I know it's hard to sweep a team. It's hard to win four games in a row. It's hard to win any baseball games. But you go three and one, fair. Sure, you go 120 and 42. This was a series you should have won, and this is a game you should have won. We're in the positive section, I know. Uh, Kirby Sneed. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if this was Kirby Sneed's last appearance for the Seattle Mariners for a while. I don't think you're carrying three lefties for all that much longer, and I think the Seattle Mariners realized <laughs> we're not going to score a whole heck of a lot of runs today, so we might as well not burn any bullpen arms especially with a three-game series coming up. Not a lot of off days coming up. Wouldn't be surprised if that Sneed's last appearance for the Mariners for a little bit, but he did a nice job. He did a nice job. He kept you in the game. It didn't really matter because the offense stunk. You know what never has stunk in its entire life? Simply Seattle, because they provide the very best in Seattle sports gear. Awesome stuff for the Mariners, the Seahawks, the Kraken, the Huskies. All those good things, and you can use your code MOLLYWAP15 to save 15% off your order. M-O-L-L-Y-W-H-O-P-1-5 automatically takes 15% off. It's a great deal from great people. If you can't remember www.simplyseattle.com and you can't remember MOLLYWAP15, there's a link in the description that gives you that code and takes you right to the website. Thank you so much, Simply Seattle. Uh, this offense stunk to high heaven. And look, is Spencer Aragetti the worst starter the Seattle Mariners have faced? No. No, they faced some guys for Colorado who are worse. They've they faced some pretty bad pitchers. Is Spencer Aragetti Aragetti? Ah, uh, is Spencer Aragetti a good pitcher right now? Heavens no. And you got worked by him. Worked. I think one of the issues I had today was they were probably a little too passive at the plate. He's someone you can jump on. He doesn't have good command. I get control of the zone. I know walks are important. They played a huge part in the win yesterday, right? You got to be assertive. You've got to be assertive. The deeper you get into counts, the more difficult it is to pick up hits the more likely that you're going to get walks. Sure, and those are great. But when you fall behind to two strikes, even a pitcher like Spencer Aragetti, who's been awful this year, can get you. And he got them a lot. This offense, I mean, for a series that you win three games out of four, this offense was horrendous for the series. A couple of big innings. For the most part, they got overmatched by one good pitcher. And Fr Framber Valdez is a pretty good pitcher, too, I guess. But Ben Brown, not even Ben Brown, Hunter Brown. Ben Brown was actually really good in the start not too long ago for the Cubs. Hunter Brown and Spencer Aragetti have been among the worst pitchers in the American League, and I believe they scored one total run against them. 
Yikes. Did they even get a run against Brown? I got to check that. I've got to check that. We're doing some. They got one. Julio Rodriguez RBI single in the first inning. That's not great. That is not great. And, you know, again, I talk about this a lot, and it's one of the toughest things to do about a daily show, is you do have to give some credit to them. Brown pitched pretty darn well. Arrogetti showed why people think he can be a mid-rotation starter someday. It doesn't mean that they were good or that the Mariner offense was good or that the result is acceptable. You can do both. I promise you, you can do both. You can give a little bit of credit to the opponent and also realize that your offense stunk to high heaven tonight. A lot of bad offensive efforts today. Uh, helps if I have the right team. You know, Crawford draws a couple of walks, and that's great, but over two and doesn't give him a chance to do any damage. Julio strikes out twice, does get a nice line single off of Josh Hader in one of their few rallies for the game. Okay. Uh, Don Canzo. A couple things about Don Canzo. Number one, hope he's having a great day. Number two, have to acknowledge the home run he hit yesterday was pretty darn big. Tied the game at one. He only scored two total. Pretty big. Number three. He looked terrible at the plate today. He did have one ball that he hit fairly hard, but on the ground. And lastly, but not least, that two-run homer from Alex Bregman. I don't know what Dom Kinzone is doing on that baseball. That was catchable. He just does not, and in particular, he's looked bad in the left field. In right field, there have been some shaky moments. There was one last night where he clearly just misread a baseball and got maybe scared by Julio's linebacker presence, maybe a little bit. But, you know, there have been issues in right field too. But he looks so more comfortable, so much more comfortable reading the ball off the bat in right field than he does in left field. Whew. That was a huge play. He should have gotten out of that inning scoreless. And again, I'm not saying that Gilbert was fantastic, especially after the third inning. He was pretty bad. That ball should have been caught. Or at the very least, he should have been able to make a play on it. But he looked lost. He looked like a video game defender. Or he looked like a uh, postman. A postman? He looked like somebody in the low post in basketball doing a little pivot drop afterwards. Just turning around to watch it go over his head. Yeah. I mean, as bad as Luke really has been over the last week offensively, he is so much better of a defensive player and a more complete offensive player, too. Luke Rayleigh needs to be in the lineup. I get that he has scuffled since the Washington series, but he needs to be in the lineup. And especially over Don Canzo. Ty France has a couple of little bloopers, but strikes out twice. A uh, Dylan Moore has been horrendous. Horrendous at the plate since we were all going gaga. And, you know, I still like Dylan Moore as a utility guy. He's just not an everyday player. Just not an everyday player. Like him in the lineup against lefties. Like him as a guy who can give people a day off. It's not an everyday player. Mitch Hanniger's at bat against Josh Hader with a couple guys on. You know, Julio lashes the single. Ty France gets the single. Kinzone gets absolutely worked by Josh Hader. The fact that they don't have a competent right-handed bat in that situation. Problematic. Problematic. But Mitch Hanniger's at bat against Hader was one of the worst I've seen this year. Three pitches down the middle of the flipping plate. Just go check my Twitter, at Crawford underscore MILB. I'll never call it X. Ever, 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 ever. Mitch Hanniger's at bat against Josh Hader. Three pitches down the freaking middle of the plate, and he couldn't put one in play. And the other Mitch was bad, too. 
it, it's I know I'm going to get criticized for being too negative because, you know, you win three out of four. You win the first three of that series. And you could argue maybe that a sweep is icing on the cake. I don't think it is against this Houston team right now. It's a bad baseball team. You face two horrible starters. And you went one run over 12 innings with 17 strikeouts. I'm sorry. If I was just doing a show after every series, and spoiler alert, when I was first thinking about putting this show together, um, I was wondering if that was the better idea, to do one after every series. But I realized that daily is better, and so far, so good. So far, so good. But if I was just doing this after the Houston series, we would have positives to talk about for sure, especially from the starting pitching. We'd have to talk about the negatives. He scored nine runs, I believe, over four games. It's not good enough. You can't waste this rotation, man. It's such a good rotation. One through five. Heck, one through six if you want to include some really nice starts from Hancock as well. But right now it's a one through five, obviously. Boy, it would be stupid to go to a six-man rotation. (laughs) I'm not saying that. I'm just speaking out loud there which is how people speak. Spencer era goody. Ah! But there's negatives to talk about. There are still issues with this baseball team. You control this division not because you're good. It's because everyone else stinks. And Houston's starting to play better. Or not Houston. Texas starting to play better. One of those teams in that stupid state is starting to play better. So now you you do take three of four, and it's a results-based industry, and so three of four is certainly good enough. It's frustrating that it's not four, but three of four. Now you get to take on an Angels team that is just awful. Just awful. I'll, I'll be curious to see how they do against Jose Soriano. Soriano's shown some real improvement, and there's some swing and miss stuff. But this is a series you should absolutely be winning. You get three against LA, and the pitching matchups are Wu against Soriano, Bryce Miller against uh, Reed Detmers. I almost called him Ty Detmers. (laughs) Good old quarterbacks. And then Luis Castillo against Griffin Canning. So, and I just wanted to talk about this real quick. You get the Angels, stink. The Athletics, stink. Kansas City, good. White Sox, reprehensible. And that's three, six, nine. Dang girl, fine. Let me sock it to you one more time. No, that's three, six, nine, 13 games before that series against Texas. What do you think is good enough there? Nine and four? I think nine and four. I think you should go nine and four over these next 13. The only acceptable series loss is going to be against the Royals. You're talking eight and five, seven and six, or heaven forbid anything worse than seven and six. Oof, magoof. A quick reminder that we're trying to get to 1,500 subscribers. And once we do, we're giving away. This card right here, Randy Johnson, autograph card that has two game used patches. It's numbered nine out of ten. I love Randy's signature, by the way. It's hard to see, I know, because of the glare, but it's just a very aesthetically pleasing signature. How that says Randy Johnson, I don't know, but it is aesthetic aesthetically pleasing. In order to win that, you need to follow the instructions from the video uh, before this. So go to game 57, watch the video to the end, and you'll find out how you can win that card. But we have to get to 1,500 by May 31st. Have to. Thank you. Really appreciate you guys watching. Please hit like and subscribe, obviously. Kind of bummer. Kind of bummer that a you a missed opportunity. A missed opportunity is the best way to say it. And 15 minutes ends now.